what the actual f is going on with Second and Charles. What's going on? 22 here, and I have been to Second and Charles now like twice. Picked up this giant stack of books right here. Well, some of these are just bags and boards, which we'll talk about here in a second. But holy sh! What what is going on with them? Their prices are insane. I've got a clip of video. We're gonna talk about that as well. Just me going through their back band showing their prices. But before all that, I just want to show you, like, I went up there for free comic book day. First of all, they didn't have any of the new free comic book day stuff, which I kind of, I get to a certain extent because it seems like they're getting away from, like, having new comics in their bins. Like, they don't do a pull list anymore and they used to. And so now it seems like it's just strictly, like, what people bring in type stuff. That's, I get it. I get it. So, for me, lucky for me, though, like, I'm fried pie variant collector and so that's like essentially what their free comic book day was but for anybody else that was in the area because we really don't have comic book stores around here they were like kind of out of luck with this so i got the marvel legacy number one fried pie variant super excited about this this is one that i did not had i've been eyeing it however they're like proud of their fried pies they want like eight dollars just normal for these books that have been in the Batmans for God knows how long. It's weird. It's weird. I don't understand. Uh, I guess they feel like they're still going to get their money back. I don't know. But I got this one free and I'm excited about it. This Captain America number 700. Now this says Fried Pie Con number 3 up here. So I don't know if this is it. I know that they had like Con exclusive variants because there was a Fried Pie Con. But I don't know if this is actually one of those books or not i can't remember i do believe i have another one of these already but i can't remember the condition this one looks really nice and of course i want like i want nine eighths of all these while i was there though i took this footage right here that we're going to stop and we're going to talk about real quick all right let's take a look at this video from the books that i found at second of charles and just how the prices are on them these are all going to be marvel books and more on the x-men side that seems to be what's just really popular right now. I mean, starting out before I even have the video going, you can see this X-Men 300 right here. Label on it is $29.95, y'all. Look at this. Look at that. $29.30 for an X-Men 300. All right, so now I've gone through and I've wrote down all the numbers of the books and checked them on cover price and have found out if there's any first appearances, at least by cover price standards. Also, what the near mint value would be. So, like, we're talking 9 to 9496 area. Near mint cover price says the fair market value on this book right now is $6, y'all. $6. First appearance of Amelia Yote. And it's the intro to the Legacy Virus. So... Fair market value per cover price, which is based off of like other purchases that have happened that they keep track of, six dollars for a near mint, y'all. Near mint. But second Charles says 30. 30. Oh, here we go. Here we go. David Nakayama. Look at that. 1350. This is X-Men House of XC1, one, one, so I don't even know what C stands for, but yeah, I'm sure they're Roman numerals. I'm just not educated enough to know what they are. Anyways, 1350, y'all. Second of Charles says 1350. This is a book that's maybe two years old, if I remember right. Uh, you can even see on the date, like when they got this book in, like it was in March that they got this book in, and... Uh, it's not a it's not a spec there's I there's the same cover that's a virgin variant that I believe is an unknown comics like exclusive but this is not that like it's the same cover but this is the trade dress it's not an exclusive from what I gather anyways regardless there's no first appearances here and fair market value per cover price near mint is two dollars two dollars Did some horrible camera work here so forgive me for that
Oh, here we go. X-Men Alpha, number one. Look at that. Let's go back just a little bit. Right there. 1895 for X-Men Alpha, number one. This is the first appearance of Dark Beast, which I think does have some spec potential. Like, don't get me wrong. I think there is some potential there. And the cover price says near mint five dollars that's the the fair market value for that book insane all right let's get back to it oh here we go let's go back west coast avengers this is issue number 13. I had to look it up because it's obviously covered. 395 for this issue. Now, I may be giving this one like a little bit too. I may be a little harsh on this one. Um, fair market value for this apparently right now is $5. Honestly, I feel like that's high. I don't know what it is about West Coast Avengers books, but maybe they're, you know, people are wanting them. Maybe they've just been in the dollar bin for too long and people are now starting to appreciate them. Maybe it's the team. The idea that maybe we'll get a West Coast Avengers. I don't know that we'll necessarily get that. I don't know that I feel confident on that. But maybe that's the reasons why that this is where it's at right now. But $3.95. Cover price says fair market value of $5. I just, I still don't know that I agree that it's a $4 book. Like, I feel like that's just a $2 book. Like, but maybe inflation is just that much on this, on you stuff now that like, this needs to be a four dollar book. West Coast Avengers number three. Let's back it up. Nine ninety five. Now this is from the limited series. The first time we got the West Coast Avengers. West Coast Avengers, not Adventures. <laughs> Uh, no, no nothing on this. Now, there were higher prices for the very fines. It was kind of all over the place. But there's not been a near mint that sold of this book since 2022 from what cover price says. And they say the fair market value as of right now with no recent sales is $2. So in 2022, this was a $2 book essentially in near mint. Now, granted, it has gone up. Like I said, very fines have hit, you know, like maybe even $7 highs. Um, it's fair market value. So, it's maybe even more substantial book. I just don't see it as a $14 book, you know, or a $10 book at that. And, and that's what they're selling it for is $10. I, I've, spoiler alert, for future videos, I've found this in dollar bins for a dollar. So, yeah. There we go. West Coast Avengers number four. Again, the limited series. Another $10. This is the final issue of that limited series, and they want $10 for it. I just, I can't. I can't. Damn. Um, cover price says the near mint fair market value for this is $4. So, double. Double, y'all. Double. Wolverine 69. Nothing significant. Just a back issue book. 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Fair market value. Cover price says $5. $5. Here we go. Uncanny X-Men number 317. Now, this does have a first appearance of Blink, who I believe was in X-Men Days of Future Past. She was the one being able to throw those little portals. Really cool character. A book I wouldn't mind having in my collection. Um, and I guess I am being harsh on this one because Cover Price says this is a $10 book now. I think it's with, like, as X-Men 97 has kind of started throwing in all these other new mutants and whatnot... Like, Dust, I think, was the one that had hit recently. 
I think mutants like this, people are starting to look for. So I kind of understand and I kind of get it. I still think this is a good bit for this book. But I could more see at least, you know, the market saying, hey, it's going towards that. Now, I don't think it should be that much of a book, but who am I to argue with what the market is doing? Uncanny X-Men 302 and $4, y'all. $3.95. Now, um, cover price has this near mints at $3. No significance to the book or anything like that, but $3. So they're at least close. And it does look like it's a newsstand. If that means anything to anybody anymore. Sorry. More bad camera shots. I'll say there's one more book. There it is. X-Force. 59, I believe. Let's see what I wrote down. Yeah, 59. Uh... 495 filler x-men x-force book a filler x-force book look how long this book has been like in their stock since november of last year november of last year they put this as a five dollar comic cover price says near mint value is a dollar that's right a dollar Alright, let's finish this video out. They even had two of them. So many books. So many books. And they're just... It's just... It's a mess looking through. But watch this. Watch this what's about to show up. Again, I apologize for the, the bad camera angles again. But look at that. Y'all see that book right there? That book is going to make another appearance here. In a matter of, of seconds. Seconds. It's going to make another appearance. So... Let's let y'all get back to the video. Stupid crazy prices, right? Then I find these books in the back, man. And they were like this old... I have an example. They're like this old, cloudy, like grungy, nasty bag and board. And the prices on them are like $3. Okay, well they were like double booked. There was like a book here and then there was a book on the back. The book on the back was this Green Lantern number 183. Really cool John Stewart Green Lantern book, right? Okay, the book on the front though was Green Lantern 182. This is a key and kind of a, you know, higher price key as well. Both books are like complete and this is when John Stewart actually takes over Green Lantern of Earth. So it's not the first time that he becomes Green Lantern or anything like that, but it's the first time like he he takes over for Hal because Hal quit. So like this is a key book for John Stewart fans, anyways. So I got these for a dollar fifty a piece essentially. When all those other X Men books and stuff like that, I don't know if it's because of the X Men hype right now or what, they're going they're putting ridiculous prices on them. They're leaving these in their dingy bags, front and back, so that you get you know two books for a buck fifty, which is fantastic. Fantastic. I'm not complaining. I, I don't mean to come off complaining. I don't mean to, honestly. I'm upset because I don't understand the mentality that is going on there. That's what I... That's in it. And the inconsistency that's going on there. Like, that's where I'm like... That's what I'm upset about. And that's what I don't understand. And that's what, that's what gets me upset. Is because I don't understand what's going on. I wind up taking... So, me and my mother would go for an, a, a mother-son outing. For Mother's Day. That's kind of like what I like to do with her. That's my, my treat to her is that, you know, we go and we hang out. We go and eat lunch. And then I, we do all the things that, like, she I, I really doesn't kind of, like, have the leisure time to do. And so it's like, you know, we'll go hit up some thrift stores and stuff like that. And then we'll go look at, like, Second and Charles Media Places. Because she enjoys media as well. So I found a set of books. Again. 
All of them. All of them. All of them. Front and back, dingy boards. Like, they've just not been processed or whatever. They were just... It was like it was too much to handle, and they just threw a sticker on there. They were all $3 a piece. $3 a piece. Well, it was the entire first volume of Dead Man. The entire... Not the Silver Age, Strange Adventures. But these are like reprints of that. So, here's Dead Man number one. And what I believe these are, are the reprints from Strange Adventures, but like brought into whatever time period this was. So, really cool. I like Dead Man, and I've been wanting to grab all those Strange Adventures books, but this is the actual first volume of Dead Man. Here is number two. Number four. You know the books that are staying in my PC are the ones that are in my lot. So, like, that's how you know, like, this stuff is staying <laughs> in the PC. Number five. Like, they even reused covers from those Strange Adventures books to, like, make the covers for this volume. Number seven. This one is even a wraparound color I, cover. I can't remember. I think the other ones have stuff on the back of them as well. Like the number one, I believe, has like the full form of number one on the back. So I, I can't remember if all of them were wraparounds though. Or like, but this one was for sure was a wraparound. So I picked up however many books, and but I didn't want to spend like a bunch of money on like all these books and stuff like that. So I, just, I wound up picking up one more little set again. Dingy, dingy bag board, old original, front to back books. So they're $1.50 a piece for the most part. I think one of those Dead Man's was $3 by itself because it didn't have a book on the back. Oh, I'm, I'm still good with that. I'm still good with it. But I found this one here, which was Omega Man number six. Nothing significant to this at, at all that I know of, anyways. But on the front of that, it had Omega Men number five. This is the second appearance of Lobo. And has, like, where you actually get his name, Lobo, in it. So this is a key Lobo book. Where, you know, number three is, like, the first cover and the first appearance and all that jazz. I, I, of course, I looked for that. Don't get me wrong. I, lo I looked. I looked to just see. Could I get a Lobo? Number one for three dollars or a buck fifty or whatever that would have been fantastic. I would have loved it, but no, no, and that's fine. I'm good with it. But still, like, still a second appearance of Lobo, and you get his first name for a dollar fifty. Come on, come on. So I need, I need somebody. I need somebody to help me out. I need somebody to let me know what the actual heck is going on with Second of Charles because the inconsistency, the it, the weirdness that bothers me that bothers me i love getting great deals don't get me wrong i'm, I'm not i'm not mad about the the deals that i'm getting and like the 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 high price marks on their back issue certain ones like deadpool they do the same way too like all deadpool issues that they had up there were 10 to 20 dollars at least at least a book 10 to 20 dollars a book because it's deadpool i just argh. And like if it's a key, if it's Lady Deadpool or something like that, hey, understand. If it's a key and you got it over there and you have it marked, you know, whether it's a high price or not, I get it. You know, you, you see that it's a key and you want to get your money. I, I totally understand, totally get it. But put, put back issues at the normal price. A dollar, two dollars, it's just something reasonable. Come on. Thank y'all so much for listening. Please check me out on the Comedy Comics podcast. New episodes drop every Monday uh, on all podcatchers, including Apple, Pod Apple Podcasts and Spotify. You can also find the new episodes on Wednesdays on our YouTube channel, Comically Comics Podcast. You can find me on Instagram, eBay, and Shortbox at 22 underscore comics. Once again, thank y'all so much for watching, and as always, y'all have a good one.